hold on, it's gonna be one hell of a ride. Okay, here we are on day two of the project in Charlotte, North Carolina, on the banks of the Catawba River. So this project is really interesting. We're working with a man named Eric Gendrison, and he is actually an Emmy award-winning writer in Hollywood. He won the Emmy for his work with the Band of Brothers miniseries. So we'll talk to him more about that. Well, tell us a little bit about your thought and idea of putting it as much underneath the home as we could. Well, it, it is kind of a wild area, and there are predators here. The herons and raccoons, and there are a lot of them up at the end of some the prey on fish, obviously, on the river. And so I wanted to have it in a protected environment. And because of the unique nature of this house, it's raised up for flood purposes. We had this area under the house, and it's all protected in a sitting area built down here with an outdoor fireplace that um, seems like the, the perfect place to put the pond and keep in mind the protection of the fish and the sanctuary. And what, is your, what are your plans for this area off the carport? This will have large pieces of slate laid down on a bed of sand with um, feed gravel in between, and this will be a sort of a sitting area here in an in indoor outdoor fireplace. Quite a fireplace, yeah. uh, and I understand that was quite an undertaking. It was indeed. This entire house is really an undertaking. The original house was destroyed by flood back in 2019, and we've been rebuilding for three years. We, we haven't even moved in yet. Tell us a little bit about your background, what you do for a living. I'm a, a writer, a producer, what's called a hyphenate, because uh, Principally, I'm a writer, but I've also produced most of the stuff that I write, um, mostly in film and television. Mm -hmm. um, uh, probably best known for uh, being a lead writer and supervising producer on Band of Brothers, which was an HBO miniseries back in 2001. That was a great miniseries. Thank you. You can see we have most of our pond rock in. We've got our Aquascape skimmer in already. Pond pretty good and locked in. One more level to go. We're going to go get some more boulders for that. He increased the size of the pond yesterday, and we hadn't ordered enough boulders. So that's why we're a little short, so we're going ready to get that. We're going to make a gentle mound of this dirt, so he has a nice planting area, and we'll have slope for a waterfall. We're just going to have a five-foot waterfall stream right here, but it is going to look fantastic. It always amazes me how much soil comes out of a pond. It just doesn't seem possible that that much soil came out of that pond, but it did. Really looking forward to working on the stream today and making the waterfalls. So we're testing out Raphael's skills today. It's a tight squeeze between these so he can get to our stone back here. So let's see if he can make it. I think he can. He's got it. You got it. You're six inches away. You got it. Oh, it's room enough to spare. Yeah, that's one way of doing it. Okay, let's go. <laughs> what we're building here is a fish cave. He's gonna have four large koi. And with this Catawba River out here, we're gonna have heron. So we're gonna try to make it safe for the koi by installing a big fish cave. We're gonna push this rock down, put a small one underneath, so it's giving them a pretty good sizable fish cave. So we're just putting down a little extra liner for protection for our fulcrum stone that's going up in there to make the cave ceiling steady. So we're placing our first character boulder. It's gonna go right here. And part of that boulder is gonna be part of the waterfall. So you got some of lichen and that makes it look pretty. And then this is what I'm talking about. That's part of the character boulder, but it's also part of the waterfall because this is where we'll have the water dropping off. Slightly tipping forward just the way we want. And it's pretty basic level side to side, so we're good. 
So here's our other character stone. Right there, right there. It's gonna be too big. Just use gravel. All right, so what we want to do here is foam behind our character boulders and waterfall stone. We're also going to have a little waterfall through here. So I'm going to start foaming. So what we want to do is seal it about two inches underneath where the water is going to come out. We'll pull this streamer liner up and over, backfill it with dirt, and we'll get a good watertight seal. Hey, it's day three of our project in Charlotte, North Carolina, on the banks of the beautiful Catawba River. We have made a lot of progress. Here it is. We're going to have a nice fish cave right here underneath the heart-shaped rock. We're going to have waterfalls there and there. Then we'll get a waterfall right there, and then we'll have a waterfall coming out of our biofalls. So the first step this morning will be attaching the liner to the biofalls. So here we are with a pond builder's best friend in regards to naturalizing a waterfall or a pond or a stream, scotch moss or any type of moss. Just put down some fresh foam on this waterfall little piece right here. And now I'm going to stick some of this moss on it and it'll naturalize it. So here's our moss after we put it in for the waterfall. Just gives it a, a more natural look. We don't see that foam. This foam will be covered by pebbles. We're gonna put some of this moss over here as well on this rock and other rock waterfalls just to kind of put a shine to it and a, a real natural look. Hey, Brian Hoagland here and we are on day four and the final day of our project in Charlotte, North Carolina. The pond is completed. We filled it up with uh, lake water yesterday just to test it and there were no leaks. So now we're gonna, we put in the lights. Now we're gonna put in our aquatic plants. And as you can see, the client also added landscaping. This side's pretty bermed out the way we want. But on this side of the pond, we got some extra dirt. Uh, it's too steep of a slope. So we're gonna berm it out as well. Some of the plantings are in place. We're ready to go. We still have to get a few more boulders to disguise our uh, biofalls. And we'll do that with some gravel and boulders. And then we'll dot a few boulders in the landscape as well. So how would you like to wake up to this view every morning from a deck balcony off your new home? Look at these beautiful picture windows of our client's house. And then... Just the, the view of Lake Catawba in Charlotte, North Carolina. And then look below. We even got a pond. It's halfway under the house and halfway out. Let's go down and take a look at that bad boy. Check out the view as you come down the steps to this wonderful little koi pond we created for him. It's about a 10 by 12. The Hoaglandscape crew did a lot of the detail work here. And one of those things was blending it in to the background. And we'll let uh, Eric talk about that in a little bit. But it really blends in nicely to the background. Looks like it's almost coming from the lake. And the, the skies of the biofalls up top. I'm really proud of my crew for that. They did a great job. I mean, you can't, you can't see that. I mean, that looks outstanding. We've got a lot of nice plants. My favorite, of course, is I always say, Procumbens Nana Juniper. This thing's gonna grow out into the stream. And patience, make a great aquatic plant in the stream. We added moss for touches. We've got some aquatic plants in here. We've got cotton candy spirea. We've got a weeping Japanese maple. We've got Purple Daydream Laura Petalum. Dotted some boulders in the landscape. 
his wife can do some more flower landscape back here. This is Goshiki Holly. And we have purple heart secretia. This will really spread and have a purple flower in the summer. And dwarf cassian grass. Got two water lilies in the pond. And we've got some uh, yellow iris, pickerel rush, and we've got some juncus in the pond itself. Eric, tell me what you think about the pond and your experience with Hoaglandscape. Well, the experience has been outstanding, and I could not possibly be happier with this pond. It really exceeded my expectations, frankly. Um, when you approach the pond, and actually from almost every vantage point, it somehow appears as though the pond is, has been here forever. And it feels like the source of the water is the river here itself, which is pretty amazing. It's sort of like that infinity pool effect that you sometimes get. And because of the perspective, the well, uh, landscaping has created almost the illusion of bringing the other side of the river over here, and the, that this is a part of it. So it's so well incorporated into the into the home itself and into the landscape. It's really impressive. Awesome. It's, the sound of it is amazing. Um, if you can hear it under the airplane. Um, and I'm just, I could not be happier with it, with the experience of putting it in. Okay, so as a final piece for this pond, we are doing a koi operation rescue. Here we go, we got some big koi in here. This is the first one that's coming out. I'm gonna put it from the outhouse to the penthouse. Thank you. There's number one. Probably under some stress right now from the move, obviously, and they'll stay still for a while, but they'll get accustomed to the new home soon, and they're gonna love it. And here's the last one. Safe and sound. Hey, I wanna thank all of you so much for visiting today. It's been a joy having you. It would be a real blessing to me if you would subscribe, and like our channel maybe even hit that bell for notifications so you don't miss us in our further journeys into our world of landscaping and water features thanks for showing up today we'll see you next time don't forget hugglandscape rocks mm -hmm.